All right, you're live. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to Academic Preparation, Grades Matter. My name is Diane Crosley Mears. I'm with the HBCU Transfer Agreement Program. I'll be your presenter for today, along with Ms. Markeisha Richardson. Markeisha. Hello, everyone. My name is Markeisha Richardson. I'm a staff member with the HBCU Transfer Project. Um, I'm also a former student of this program. Um, I got my start at Victor Valley College, and I transferred to Bethune-Cook University, where I graduated. And now I'm back to tell everyone about this amazing program that shaped the person that I am today. Um, if you will look at the chat on the stage tab, um, you will see that I posted a co student contact form. So if you're a California Community College student and you are interested in transferring to an HBCU, if you can please take a second to fill out that um, student contact form so we can get in contact with you and to help start your transfer um, process today um, as well as if you are in more you know interested in learning more about our project if you can please join our um, listserv that would be great and we are ready to get started Ms. Diane are you ready I'm ready all right Thank you. Here we go. Academic preparation, grades do matter. You are on the road to success. Thank you. Our agenda for today will cover minimum, minimum eligibility, grades and classes, academic renewal, class selection and materials to keep. Thank you. Minimum eligibility for junior transfer admissions to CSU and UC Systems qualifies you for the HBCU project. Thank you. When you visit your counselor, and we recommend that you do that at least once a semester, ask to see the minimum eligibility for junior transfer admissions to California public colleges document. That document will have California State University as well as UC California minimum and um, AS and AS, uh, excuse me, AS and AA degree requirements, which are approximately 60 units and the minimum of 30 transferable general education units as well. We'll tell you more about the units you'll need and the classes you'll need to take. But the one thing we want you to focus on is the document that you will get will say that you'll need 30 units of CSU general education with a C or better. And we're encouraging better. And for the UC, it will say that you would need a minimum of a 2.4. But we're saying think better because for the HBCU project, the minimum GPA is a 2.5. We'll talk more about this later. Thank you. Again, 30 transferable California Community College units with a 2.5 overall grade point average. Thank you. So for the California State University equivalent, we said 30 units of uh, general education requirements, but please know that for some requirements um, and for some campuses, 39 units of general education are required. So just be aware, know your campus. Thank you. This document is also something that we wanna recommend that you get from your counselor or something similar to it. It's called the CSU General Education Breath, option C. What's important about this is it lists the classes that you need to take for each of the areas. We mentioned before, you'll need A1, A2, A3, and B4. We'll go into a little bit more about what those areas are, but what's good about this form is that you also have a place where you can check them off as you take them. It helps you to keep track of what you're taking and ensure that the transferable units that you take are exactly what you need because everything is not transferable. Thank you. General education areas, we'll say it once more, A1, A2, A3, and B4 must be completed. 
And while it may stay with a grade of C, think better. Thank you. So when you're looking at that, A1 through A3, A1 relates to oral communication. Communications one, two, and six. They may be used in only one area. A2 represents written communication. English one will fulfill that requirement. A3, critical thinking. Communications two, six, philosophy one and five, English two and four. There are options sometimes that can be um, acceptable from another college. Your counselor will be the one to share that information with you. Thank you. Again, oral communications. Thank you. Written communications. Critical thinking and B4, mathematics. So when you get to your math section, again, it will tell you that it needs to be completed with a grade of C, but we want you to think B, think better. So the options for you, the classes that are your options to take are math 2, 4, 11, 12, 20, 21, 22, 23, 30, 31, 40, 49, 51, and 55. Quite a selection. Once more, courses from another college, advanced placement exam may be in progress. Those are things that can also be considered. Thank you. As we said, math had a lot of choices. There's algebra, geometry, calculus, trigonometry, and more. Thank you. For the University of California, their equivalents, again, are 30 units of general education. Thank you. But they include two transferable English composition courses, one transferable math concepts and quantitative reasoning course, four transferable courses from at least two different subject areas. So the subject areas are arts and humanities, social and behavioral science, and physical and biological sciences. Thank you. You can celebrate now. You're on the way. You finished all of that coursework. You're ready to go. Thank you. Now, sometimes when you're on that road and you're getting ready to celebrate, sometimes things can happen that are unexplained, unplanned for, like sickness. You may be sick or someone in your family or significant other may become sick or worse, death. These things can have a negative impact on your grade point average. And if it does, there are things that you must consider. You can replace the grades that you earned or you can incorporate them. So if the grades that you earn don't compromise your grade point average, in other words, your grade point average does not drop below a 2.5, you may want to just incorporate it. On the other hand, if you have to replace those grades, they have to be repaired. You can't use them. They're going to bring your, your grade point average down to um, a place where you don't want them to be. Then you think about appealing and you would do that through a written process, through admissions and records and or fiscal services. Thank you. One of the tricks to getting through college is taking one challenging class with two less demanding classes for 12 units. In that way, the challenging class that you're taking, which will take quite a bit of time because again, it is challenging, won't detract from the two less demanding classes that you're going to take. And you'll be able to, to do just, just fine with B's and A's in all three classes as opposed to spending all of your time on one class and not having enough time to spend on the other two classes and maybe not doing your best. So take one challenging class with two less demanding classes. Thank you. Some majors require specific classes along with specific GPAs. It's important to know 
what the requirements are for your major. For example, thank you. Thank you. Nursing. Nursing requires a 2.7 GPA versus the HBCU project 2.5 GPA. Thank you. Now that you've finished your under your um, community college work and you've selected your HBCU campus, there's some things you want to take with you, materials you want to keep. So you want to keep your class syllabus and you want to know how to access your campus catalog so that you can be sure that the classes you take will be comparable to the ones that will align with the campus that you're going to. So thank you. Our example for today will be Solano Community College. We would go to the home page. We're going to look at cat the catalog. You should see start here, go anywhere. You'll go to your catalog. Once you get to your catalog, you want to make sure that the catalog you're looking at is the date of the time in which you took your classes. So our catalog today is for 2020 to 2021. We're going to go to the section that deals with transfer students. Thank you. And what we find is that the catalog tells us that California community colleges have transfer agreements with many historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs. Currently, we have 39 participating campuses. Participating HBCUs guarantee admissions to students who have completed the following. I want to read that just once more so you understand that participating HBCUs guarantee admissions. You will not get an I'm sorry, Charlie letter. You won't get a letter that says this classification is impacted and we have no room for any further students. They will guarantee your admissions to students who have completed the following. So your AA degree, your AS degree, which is about 60 units, or a minimum of 30 transferable units with a cumulative grade point average of a 2.5. That information is in your catalog as well. Thank you. The other thing you'll want to know how to do is to look for your specific major and the information related to that. We're going to use accounting today for our um, example of a major. When you go to the catalog, your catalog will list your major and it will give you a little blurb about it. It'll tell you in this case that accounting has been one of the fastest growing professions and the monetary rewards for the individuals just entering the field and those achieving corporate positions are among the highest. Accountants deal with the financial condition of a company, an individual, or an organization. An accountant is an analyst who is employed because of expertise in financial matters. So that'll give you a synopsis of what it is your major is all about. And when you go down a little further, you'll find out that it will also tell you the number of units that you need to take. And in this case, it's 29. And you'll find that listed on the page as well. The next page will give you a description of each and every class that you have to take in order to complete that major coursework. For example, Accounting 177 says a comprehensive study and analysis of manufacturing costs as they apply to planning, controlling, and determining unit costs, inventory, valuation, and income. So you have everything you need in your hand or access to, as in the websites, to know what you're bringing to your HBCU. And they'll be able to look at that information and make sure that it aligns with what their requirements are. Thank you. So in conclusion, what we've done is we've gone to the campus homepage. We've looked at the table of contents in the catalog. Thank you. 
we've looked at the transfer information and that as it pertains to four-year colleges and universities. Thank you. We've located your major, your major class requirements. Our example today was accounting. Thank you. So in conclusion, quality grades will increase your rate of success. A 2.5 is the grade point average that you're looking for to participate in our HBCU program. But let me tell you, a 3.2 grade point average is even better. The better the grade point average, the better the access to opportunities. It will open doors to scholarships, to housing, to other perks. Those are things that will help you along the way because grades do matter. Thank you. Do you, do you have any questions for us today? Ms. Markeisha? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Diane. Great job. <laughs> um, so again, um, if I can reiterate, if you are a California Community College student. Um, if you look in our chat, um, we have a student contact form that you can fill out um, so we can get in contact with you to help you transfer to your HBC that you may be interested in, as well as if you are a counselor or, you know, just someone who wants to learn more, if you can join our listserv so we can, so that we are able to send you um, more information, as well as um, if you could just take a second to complete our survey once our session is done. Um, also, if you can just direct your questions in the stage. Um, on the stage tab, you can, you know, comment, questions, concerns. We're here to help you, um, give you any information that you may need. Thank you, Ms. Marquisha. Are there any questions in the chat? So we have one from Malik. I hope I um, said that correctly. He says, I'm a freshman. Can I still fill out form or get in contact with anyone? So by freshman, do you mean a freshman um, in high school? Or are you like a first year at your um, community college? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are on your first year. So you can um, fill out that contact form and we can still, you know, help you to make sure you take, you know, the courses that you need. Um, if you are interested in transferring, you know, when you have directly 30 UC or CSU transferable units, um, that could be, depending on how many units you take per semester, that can be, um, you know, next spring or next fall. So um, the links aren't working. Uh oh. Sorry about that. But yes, Miss Diane. Are there any other questions in the chat? Caleb wants to know, would it be possible if he can have his personal statement looked at? Absolutely. And we have a webinar specifically dealing with personal statements. We'd love to help you with that. Um, the information should be in the chat. Is that correct, Ms. Markeisha? So for that, I believe that is tomorrow's session. So we also have another question. Um, first, Just a moment before we go to that one, mm -hmm. um, where does the gentleman find the information for the personal statements? And can you see perhaps when it I'm is going to be held in the chat? So Dr. K will. Um, we will have someone putting um, tomorrow's session info in the chat um, about personal statements. Great, thank you. Also, I updated the links. They should be working now. Okay. Um, if, aren't, um, if someone can let me know. Um, we also have another question from Kimani who says, who would I contact about making sure I am taking the right classes? That's an excellent question. Your counselor would be the person to reach out to and make sure that they give you or go over with you the forms that we talked about today that list the classes that you need to take, um, the option three form. You want to have that in your hand. 
so that you can check off your classes as you take them. It's called the CSU, in other words, General, excuse me, California State University General Education Breath Option C form. And That's the form you want to have in your hand so you can see the classes that you need to take and you can check them off. But you also want to meet with your counselor every semester to be sure that you're taking what you need to take. And I'm going to share what that looks like so they can, um, you know, know what they're looking at. OK, so this is the one she was referring to. So you right. can generally find this in the counseling office when you go to set up your um, appointment with your counselor and they should be, you know, guiding you off of this sheet here. And you want to have one yourself as well. Correct. And you you really want to, um, you know, complete this sheet every semester that you take courses. You want to, um, you know, check off which classes you've taken as well as put in your grades. So that way you can know, um, you know, what else you need to um, complete. And keep track of your grade point average. Thank you, Ms. Marquisha. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, if you're able to, you can take a screenshot of this picture. So that way, when you go talk to your counselor, you know, you'll know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Okay. Are there any other questions? As of right now? No, but um, one of our staff members, Dr. Karen McCord, she said um, the person, personal statement workshop is actually not going to take place this week. It will be um, taking place later this month, but she did provide her email in the chat. So that way you can email it to her and she can take a look at it and help you with that. That's great because I believe it's Dr. McCord who actually uh, is the presenter for that particular workshop. So you're in good hands. Yes. So I'm just going to take a look through again on the chat. Um, we have Miss Ochoa, Miss Lorena Ochoa. That's actually one of my, um, that was our tra my transfer counselor at Victor Valley College. Oh. So, so happy that you came to see me and see, you know, <laughs> some of the hard work. <laughs> How nice. Yes. And Marquisha has just been a, a just a, a joy to have, a, just a, wonderful young lady to to work with so you all did something good there thank you okay we have another comment or question so from jamesia if i am eligible eligible to transfer into the fall 2022 semester should i be working on a personal statement now i haven't started the transfer process yet but i'm approaching the end of my required coursework for ucla's psychobiology de department Absolutely. You want to start on your personal statement and you want to apply for um, any scholarships that may be available. You want to do that early, particularly. And I know you said you're looking at UCLA, but there you may. I'm sure you want to. Actually, I would encourage you to also look at HBCUs because the requirements are the same. And you want to have not just one campus, not just one school that you're applying to. Um, three is typically what we recommend. And with HBCUs, we they have a special application process so that you may not even have to pay for the application. Your counselor will have that information as well. But uh, yes, you do want to begin working on your personal statement. Now, earlier is better. And I, I apologize. I mispronounced uh, your name, Jamisha. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but as she said, you definitely want to get started now on your on your um, personal statement. And she says she's interested in Xavier. Oh, that's amazing. Oh. That's awesome. Um, also, you know, just to let you know, um, we are meeting with some HBCU presidents, and Xavier University is one of the. Um, uh, campuses, their uh, president will be uh, presenting and talking about it. She says, I'm I'm just nervous about moving to Louisiana. I'm already a transplant from Indiana. Okay. Okay. That's not unusual. It's not unusual to be a little nervous because you're moving to a different place, but you're gonna not going to be there forever. Um, if you transfer with your, with 60, to 60 um, transferable units, you're going to be there, what, a couple of years? And then you're going to 
be heading back home. So the advantages in terms of your um, making that transition outweigh, I'm telling you, they'll outweigh the scariness of it. Because once you get there, the thing that's a joy about HBCUs is you're going to get a family when you get there. You're going to have people who are invested in your success. If you succeed, they feel like they've succeeded to your teachers, your counselors. You're getting a family. So yeah. even though it may be a little uncomfortable, it'll be very much worth it. Yes. And just speaking from experience from myself, going from California all the way to Florida, which I attended Bethune Cook University, it was in a, a different transition because I had never lived anywhere outside of California. Um, the Southern hospitality was different, um, you know, for me. Um, it was definitely an adjustment. But once I began to, you know, just be myself and really um, understand why I was there, I was there for not only my academics, but for a whole experience going to an HBCU. Um, of, of course, we want to focus on the academics, but it's it's, it, it's an experience. It's definitely an experience and it's a great experience. Um, but yeah, I, I say, you know, just do it scared. It, it's OK. You'll you'll be able to figure it out. And again, the um, the culture on the campus, it, it's a family culture. It's definitely a family culture. You have your professors who care so much about you because they understand um, you know, what it means to be young, black, and honestly in America. So they want you to succeed. They, you know, if they see you struggling, they will make it a point to say, hey, what do you need help with? What what can I help you with? As well as your peers, you know? Um, so yeah, definitely it, it's okay. It's okay to be nervous. It's okay. And that's um, understandable but I think that it'll be well worth the trip. Mm -hmm. So we had a, um, we also have Dr. Aaron, um, who's also a staff member um, on our team, who's in the chat right now. Um, mm -hmm. Someone asked if we will have representatives from Tuskegee. Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. um, we will, um, Tuskegee will be there during our alumni event on Thursday um, from four to 6 p.m. Markeisha, is the calendar in the chat so that they can see what's coming up? Um, no. But also, if they sign up, they'll get our daily updates. Yes. Also, again, I reiterate, if you um, join our listserv, you will get um, the flyers for the for the following days to come, um, and that will you know show each event and you know just what's coming up, as well as you can register for um, the next event. So um, if the links aren't working in the chat, please let me know so I can um, fix it as soon as possible. Um, I'll go ahead and repost them again just to update it. Thank you, Markeisha. Mm -hmm. yeah, I we definitely want to get on the list there because we have events that are going on uh, all year long. And so you don't want to miss out. The information is invaluable. Yes. So I'll actually go ahead and um, post them separately. So the first one will be the student contact form. Mm -hmm. I just posted that. Next, I'm going to post the link for our listserv. So that way you can, um, if there's anyone out there, um, you know, who wants to know the next events to come, um, joining our listserv will get you that flyer as well as information on how to register for the um, next events. Excellent. Thank you. And lastly, I will be posting our sur survey. Um, if you could please just take a moment to complete our survey, um, give us feedback. Um, so the time will be, um, we had a question about um, the time. It will be Pacific time for all of our um, events. Mm -hmm. Pacific Standard Time, sorry. Right. Um, does anyone else have any, you know, more questions? We are here to help you and serve you. Yes. Also, be sure if you're on social media, please follow us 
on Instagram and Facebook. The handle is the same. It's going to be at CCC transfer the number two HBCU. That's it. Are there any other questions, Markeisha? Yes, we have um, another one from Kimani, and please forgive me if I pronounce it wrong, um, but she asks, what's the dynamic for sororities? So great question because Miss Diane here is actually um, I'm a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority. And so, oh my gosh, once you become a member of a sorority, and we want to encourage you to do <clears throat> that, when you get on campus, we don't want you to be isolated. We want you to participate in campus activities. Sororities and or fraternities are just one of the opportunities that you'll have, but joining a sorority means that you're joining a sisterhood. You're joining a sisterhood for life. And so <clears throat> you're not ever alone. I don't care what state you go to, what city you go to, because the membership expands worldwide. And so the, the difference is like night and day. Being on a campus by yourself and being on a campus with sisters is a special bond and a special relationship. And they have special activities that are specific to sororities. So there's step shows and talent shows and um, things that happen that you do on, at games. And um, there's rush week. There are just a lot of different uh, activities that you can become involved with on campus that are whole and healthy. And you'll be doing community service projects as well because Delta uh, Sigma Theta, and I think most of them now, all of them are pretty much community service organizations at this day and time. So it's a good thing to do. I certainly recommend it. Yes. Um, also, um, um, upcoming this week, uh, myself and another staff member, Michael, will actually be talking about um, the campus culture on HBCUs. Um, again, joining our listserv will get you that information and get you the flyers to register for our following events, as well as on Thursday, we will have some HBCUs who are going to talk about their specific campus culture on Thursday. Um, you don't want to miss that. No, as well as tomorrow, um, we are going to have um, a student panel um, and we have some um, recent grads who have gone through this program um, for May 2020 who actually attended Grambling and she will be speaking on her experience um, of uh, being a member of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. So, yes. Um, someone asks, Nolan Brown asks, will school be on campus for all HBCUs in fall 2021? That is a great question. Remains to be seen. Yes. Um, each campus will, um, of course, respond differently. Um, so, yes. Um, it's my understanding, though, that for the campuses where labs are involved, they are having them on campus. However, it's all in a safe environment. So there's social distancing. All of the precautions are in place so that all of the students stay safe. Yes. So we had another question from um, Jamisha Taylor, and she asks, how do I even begin to choose a sorority? They all seem to offer sisterhood and geared towards community service, and I want both of those things. So Jay, question. That is a great question. Um, although I did not, you know, join a sorority, um, just some help, helpful tips, tips, sorry, that, you know, the, um, um, some of the, sorry, <laughs> some of the tips that I've learned from attending an HBCU is that you want to do your own personal research. It's honestly going to be about um, the sorority that you connect with. Um, but again, during doing, um, deep research and just looking at each sorority. Um, you never want to go out um, and boldly state, I'm going to join such and such you know, sorority. That's that's something that, uh, again, we'll talk about in uh, campus culture and you know, other um, students will talk about their experience, but it, it's just about doing, doing research and looking at each sorority. What do they have to offer? What, what do you see yourself, you know, um, doing and connecting with that sorority. Ms. Diane, do you have anything? I do. To 
Okay. So okay. the other thing you want to do is connect with the sorority that is what you feel is valuable. They're doing what you feel is valuable. The reason I pledged uh, Delta Sigma Theta in college was because they were working with the Head Start programs in the communities. And they were also doing work with the um, senior citizen facilities in low income areas. And so those were two projects that I felt strongly about. And so um, the other groups at that point, they were just having parties, which is which is okay too. There's a time for that too. But um, I was interested in community service. And so, and, and I was already doing community service type things. And so that was a good fit for me. But so you're gonna find the group, you're gonna join the group that has your values in mind. And you'll know once you get there, you'll see who's doing what and how they're doing it. And if it's if it's um if it's okay, if it if it meets your standard, then that's probably the group for you. But you'll see when you get there. You'll 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 check them out and see which one looks most like you. Yes. It's all about research. Research, research, research. That's what you know I was told, definitely. Are there any other questions? So we had a great tip from Dr. Erin. Um, she said, part of your sorority research is going to include re researching the specific chapter on your HBCU campus. It's a great tip, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we have a question from Sandy G Gonzalez. She says, as, as a transfer counselor, I know there is a PowerPoint I can view that shares about the transfer guarantee. I understand the CSU or I get C, um, GE for students interested in HBCUs. We, we would make sure they are following the GE pattern or pursuing ADTs, then explore the colleges that fit their career moves best. Immediately thereafter, refer to sign up for the contact form. They will hear from who? Okay, so I believe she's asking for the students that are interested in um, attending the HBCU, um, should they follow the GE pattern or um, the ADT pattern, if I believe? I think I, I understood the question to be, do they, yeah, the general um, general coursework problems uh, pattern. So yes, you the students would follow the same classwork that they would take if they were going to a UC or a CSU. Mm -hmm. Those will qualify them for the HBCU project. Once they fill out the contact form, they will hear from our organization. If, the previous contact form also asked them things like what was their major interest what college were they considering mm -hmm. and so they will hear back from us with information related to the the schools that link to the things that they say that they're interested in doing whether it's medicine or nursing or being an attorney or whatever it is a social worker whatever it is that they say they'll hear back from us um, with information addressing their interest Yes, and it, it will be either myself or, um, again, I mentioned um, our staff member, Michael, who will be reaching out to the students to, you know, kind of see where they are and what support that they need. Um, so, yeah, the, the, um, the process kind of goes, um, they meet with their counselor, they make sure that they are, you know, on track. And depending on when they are ready to transfer, um, the counselor, um, um, if the student is ready to transfer, let's say fall 2021 is coming up. If they are ready to transfer, you know, the the counselor will provide them with the um, promo code to apply at the Common Black College application site. Again, we wait, we waive the fee for up to four of our partner HBCUs that you are interested in. Uh, once once the student, you know, applies, um, they will go ahead and send in their transcripts. Um, and we, again, they'll, they, they will fill out a student contact form as well. And we will reach out to them to help to, to help um, to support them 
during that transfer process, making sure that, you know, they sent their transcripts, the, their official transcripts um, to make sure, you know, they're thinking about what what is it going to take to move and, you know, just narrow, narrowing down which schools um, would be best for them and what they want to pursue. So I hope we answered your question. Um, it looks like we have another question from Desiree Temple. She says, do you recommend me to move out of state and move in state to have a cheaper um, annual fee? So if I understand the question correctly, you're asking, do we recommend moving out of state? Um, and I'm assuming, you know, you're asking about the um, tuition fees. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Dr. Erin actually answered that question. She says, if the campus does not offer in-state tuition through our partnership, um, you want to research the residency requirement on the HBCU's website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of, uh, a lot of our um, partner schools do offer in-state tuition um, to specifically to California Community College transfer students. Which is excellent. That means that they treat you just like you you are a resident of that state. Yes. You don't have to pay any out of state fees. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions that we can ask? Answer. <laughs> These were some great questions. Great questions. So. We look forward to hearing more from you um, through the contact sheets, through any um, links that we have made available to you to use to connect with us. We're always available to answer the questions that you may have in mind. So don't think that just because you didn't, you didn't, you didn't think to ask it today that you still won't have an opportunity to do so. Yes, we are here to answer any questions at any time. Um, Dr. Karen says, we have a list of the schools that offer in-state tuition we do. for California Community College students. We do. Um, I believe it's on the website that will be coming out. Are there any other questions? Okay. Um, no, oh. but I am going to share um, the flyers that are coming up. Okay. Um, and as I share them on my screen, if you're able to, you know, just screenshot them. So that way. Sorry, give me one second. Okay, there we go. Okay. Oh, well, there we go. So this is this week's events. Let me let me readjust the sharing so they can see the full. Thank you. I was going to ask if you could roll it up. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, there we go. It's, still can you see that it? it's very tiny. Uh oh. How about now? It's larger. So okay. As you'll Ask see if they can see it. Ask them if they can see it. Can you put in the chat and let us know if you can see that? that she's trying to share with you? Or 
Everyone else says yes. They can see. Okay, so as you um as you see, um Tuesday, February second, which is tomorrow, um, we will have a um, virtual HBCU tour event um, that will be hosted by Mr. Jovan Dukes. Um, that will be from 11 a.m. till 12:30 p.m. Um, we will also, in the evening time, have a panel with some of our a CCC to HBCU transfer students. Um, um, that would be great if you are interested in transferring to an HBCU to kind of hear the stories of some of our um, transfer students, some that are some students that are currently there, as well as those that have success, successfully graduated. Um, and then on Wednesday, we will have um, the financial aid department um, of some of our partner HBCUs. They will be presenting and kind of giving you, you know, some tips on uh, or giving you the ABCs of financial aid. That will be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And I believe Dr. Kimara will be the one facilitating that. Yes. Um, as well, followed by that presentation, Dr. Karen again will be um, talking about how to fund your HBCU education. So talking about scholarships, financial aid, and just taking advantage of, you know, um, getting your schooling paid for it. Um, after that, she will also talk about attending your HBCU with a family. So if you, um, you know, you have a family and you are interested in relocating and transferring to an HBCU, she will be talking about that and giving tips about that, as well as we will have a career fair event. So um, if you are someone who is interested and, you know, looking for um, a job, um, come join us at three from three to six p.m. Um, and then on Thursday, February 4th we will have a president's panel from some schools, including Xavier University, um, Tougaloo, um, and there are a couple, couple other, I believe Stillman College, and a few other, but I can't recall them right now. Um, but next, um, from 1 to 2 p.m., it will be myself and Michael. Uh, we will be talking about the campus culture um, for some of the HBCUs. Um, also on Thursday, we will have um, presentations from California clubs on some of our partner HBCUs, um, the Alumni so Association and Black, oh, sorry, Black Greek Life um, from mm -hmm. 4 to 6 p.m. So um, the person who asked about um, sorority and, and fraternities, that would be a great presentation to, you know, um, attend so that way you can ask specific questions and you know um, you can hear hear stories from you know people who are actually doing it and yeah and lastly on Friday February fifth we have an HBCU transfer fair um, where some where some of our partner HBCUs will come and um, do sessions and answer any questions that you may specifically have for that campus and that will be from 12 to 3 p.m. So again joining our listserv will um, you will get this flyer sent to you as well as if you'd like if you want to take a screenshot I will zoom out there we go so that way you can see what's what's coming up and yes so I'll leave it up for about another minute or two. And we'd love to see you join us. This is the place to come to get all of those questions answered that you've been wondering. Yes. And hearing other people's questions may pique your interest in some other areas as well. Correct. And if you know anyone else who is, you know, a student at your community college and they're not familiar with HBCUs, but you think, you know, HBCUs would be great for them. I would definitely say spread, you know, spread the word about our events. This is great information and um, attending an HBCU is definitely an experience that um, is truly like no other. I am so grateful for uh, for attending an HBCU because I actually felt like I mattered on the campus. I felt like I was seen. I felt like I was being nurtured. Um, and yeah, you, not that you don't get that at a, um, you know, a CSU or a UC, but it's just different at an HBCU. You're more than a number. Yes. They're seeing you as a whole person and looking at your potential and what you're going to bring back to our country, our nation, your city, your state. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. And okay. Okay. Are there any further questions? Not that. Um, no. Well, well, we did have one from Miss Ochoa. 
She said, how do we get the list of schools with in-state tuition? Um, you can act, uh, Dr. Karen uh, posted her email in the chat and you can actually reach out to her and she will email you that flyer. Um, if anyone else is interested in receiving that flower, flyer, please email um, Dr. Karen McCord. Her email is right there in the chat and she will send you that information. Um, when you email her again, of course, just you know, state what you're looking for and she will email that to you. Great, thank you, Dr. Karen. If there are no further questions, we want to say thank you for joining us all today and great questions. We, we love hearing from you and, and having the opportunity to um, interact with you and, and answer the questions that you have. So hopefully you'll join us the rest of the week because we have something every single day of this week. So don't miss out. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ms. Markeisha. Thank you. And you all have a great Black History Month. <laughs> we won't forget that black history is 365, but you know, that's true. That's true. All right. We're getting ready to leave now. Thank you all. See you next time. Bye. -bye. And please, please complete our survey. I will repost it again before we, before we leave. Okay. That is in the chat. Three things I want you to do, complete the student contact form if you are a student in interested in transferring in it to an HBCU or you just wanna learn more, please um, fill out our student contact form or if you are a um, transfer counselor and you wanna learn more about our project, please join our listserv um, and complete yep. our survey. Thank you and I look forward to see you, seeing you all throughout the week. Bye-bye, we'll see you next time, bye.